wanted a process that we could look at that would really make sure that you not only reduced conflict, but you prevented it. Because we see that it's very important, and I know many of you in your states use facilitation as a means to go in when, when the situation is somewhat broken, not maybe ready for mediation out or in that kind of fuzzy in-between stage and look at it that way. I want to submit to you that one of the ways that you can look at facilitation is to think about it preventing the conflict in the first place. That if you have a process where people feel truly collaborative and truly that they're a part of it, you don't have the conflict to resolve in the end, or at least as much of it. It's a great point. In, in fact, when we started down this road in 98, we had no concept of this ever being thought of as conflict resolution. We were trying to prevent the problems, to be perfectly <coughs> honest. So we were very pleasantly surprised when it sort of became a, a conflict resolution tool. A facilitated IEP slash ARD meeting. And that answer is on page two. A facilitated IEP meeting is one in which an IEP team, uh, an IEP is developed by a collaborative team, and they share responsibility both for the meeting process and the results. And the process piece is very, very important. Because without a proper process, you won't get to the results. And the decision making is managed through the use of facilitation skills. Now facilitation has been around for 50 years. Business has been using it. All Doug and I did was say, let's adapt that process to IEP meetings. So I always want to know if I'm doing something, what is it going to get me? Well, that answer is next. The process for facilitation for IEP meetings enables a team to build and improve strong relationships amongst its team members. That's so critical because we have to have a document at the end that we are going to implement. We're not messing around, we're talking about the life of a child. So it has to be something that we can really collaborate on. Reach true consensus. And I think sometimes we in education think that consensus, which is mandated by federal law, is about everybody being what I call T and D, thrilled and delighted with everything that is going to be presented at the IEP meeting. It's not, it means you can live with support and implement. So when mother says to you, well, I'm not thrilled with this, but I'll go along with it, you've got consensus. When that special ed teacher says, well, it isn't everything I want, but I guess it's okay, you have consensus. And we have to listen for that. Consensus is a very interesting bar. We're going to talk a lot about consensus in these next two days. Focus the IEP content and process on the needs of the child. Now, I don't know about you. But I've been through enough IEP meetings that were about the schedule of the speech pathologist and when they're on the campus. If you're at the secondary level, the God bless master schedule and when the classes are, uh, what the parent wants, and the last thing anybody's talking about are the needs of the child. So this process really helps you focus on those needs of the child. And finally, to exercise an efficient process where you can use good communication skills and reflective listening. I know over the next couple of days, even though this is a very sophisticated audience and most of you have a great and strong understanding of facilitation, that you don't always think about facilitation as being efficient. Well, I'm here to tell you that it certainly can be because it can eliminate those what I call chapter two and three meetings that you have to have next week and a month down the line and so on and they drag out. You can get all the issues out and get them over, broken, and done at one meeting. And that's where the value of it is. Particularly, I think, when you're looking at complex information for complex uh, disabilities that you're dealing with with a student or really significant problems. Okay, let's talk about the purpose of facilitation, page three. I, I don't know about you, but I love movies, 
And uh, I, I think growing up in the Los Angeles area, I grew up in Orange County, California, you get a real love of that growing up in that part of the community. My daddy used to, when I was very small, take me to movies. And he always took me to grown up movies and would sit and talk to me about them. So I love Turner Classic movies. And I was watching an interview and it struck me that really the only collaborative art form that is multidisciplinary are movies. There really is no other art form that requires so many people to get together. And when you hear these people talk about the movies on Turner Classic Movies, you know, they'll talk about so-and-so had a conflict and that director was lost, all that kind of thing. Well, I was listening to an interview with the guys that did Dr. Zhivago and uh, Lawrence of Arabia, Sir David Lean and Sir Robert Bolt. And they were talking about Dr. Zhivago. And uh, Sir Robert Bolt, who wrote the script, was talking about, you know, that this is a great allegory and the story of good and evil. And he went on and on about this. And they flashed over to David Lean and he said, and you see, I thought it was just a good story. And it struck me then that they had approached this from two very disparate points of view, but had made a wonderful thing together, this beautiful movie. And I think that sometimes is something that we lose when we think about IEP meetings and what we can do. It doesn't mean we all have to agree, but we do need to come with, as this says in this Venn diagram, that collaborative attitude. Coming together, making sure that we can come together with an attitude that we can agree on. Maybe not completely, but I can appreciate your point of view and you can appreciate mine. That's what collaboration is about. And then getting together and thinking about our process just like movies require years of preparation, we don't need years of preparation, but we certainly need some time to prepare for IEP meetings. And that's where the strategic planning comes in. And then finally, you need some facilitated behaviors. Those specific tools and techniques that we're going to teach you that will help you move a meeting through the stages that they need to go through. Where all those things come together, you get the concept and you can make yourself a note of shared understanding and shared responsibility. Where you have shared understanding, you are going to have agreement. Have you ever been in an IEP meeting or heard of anyone who has been and they say to you, I don't understand and I'm not going to sign this, I'm not going to agree to it? You know what, I don't blame them. I wouldn't sign something and wouldn't agree to it. We're talking about the life of a child here. I want agreement. I want to understand. Shared responsibility. We need to make sure that all of us take a part in this. You talk to teachers out in the field, and they'll tell you that they're burnt out, that they feel like they go to an IP meeting and they're required to do everything. We need to empower the other people that are sitting around that IEP table to all have a role and a say in the process. And that's where we're going to find the value of shared responsibility. So to develop the skills, the knowledge, and the mindset for facilitation, you guide IEP groups toward their objectives. You assist people in building understanding and agreement. You know, we drove through several traffic lights on the way here. Now, fortunately, while Sally was driving, uh, she stopped at the red ones and she went on the green ones, which really always helps, more or less. So, when we think about something as universal as a traffic light, what does red mean? Stop. Stop. What does green mean? Go. Go. What does yellow mean? Faster. Faster we have over here, we have to slow down over here. Something as universal as a traffic light, we don't have agreement on yellow. Now picture us around the table at an IEP meeting. 
and we have complex information that we have to go through and try to build understanding on it. How difficult for us, so that's very, very critical. And finally, the last purpose is to bring out the best in all group members. You know, if I'm operating at my best, and you are, we're going to be able to develop the best possible document for that child, and that's what we're after.